Hi, everyone. Well, uh, I'm Matias Miranda from uh, Chile. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about fostering agenda coherence in public investment in Latin America and the Caribbean, the public investment case. Um, OK. Then uh, why I'm talking about this? Uh, this is because I work for the Global Initiative in Disaster Risk Management. Uh, this is a project from the uh, German Federal Ministry of Economic uh, Cooperation and Development. And the objective of, of this um, project is to support the stakeholders, uh, multiple stakeholders at different levels to strengthen in their efforts to achieve coherence between global agendas as Paris Agreement, Sendai Framework, 2030 Agenda, and develop uh, a new urban agenda. And um, why is, uh, and then why we are looking for coherence between these agendas? Well, it's very simple because when uh, we are not working coherently, between this agenda, we duplify efforts. And that became uh, an efficient waste of resources. And so, um, as you may see, uh, we do a little illustration. Sorry. In this little illustration that uh, I'm apologies because it's in Spanish, there's uh, a little example of how different agendas are related. And we can see from just the objectives of the send, uh, send and frame framework to the other agenda has 20, 30 agendas and the Paris Agreement agenda and the new human agenda, they are very related. And, um, and even, even so in, in infrastructure that is the topic that we are working in public investments. And um, uh, the thing is that when you are working on development this or achieve these objectives in any agenda, you are also working when we when you are working in one objectives, you obviously are working in objectives of the other agenda it's impossible to separate them. And, um, and then it, it comes the question, how do we foster coherence? Well, there's a says in Spanish that uh, it comes del dicho al hecho hay mucho trecho. That could be in English something like uh, from paper to reality, there's much to be done. And so we support uh, a different practice. Uh, we try to do it in a very practical way. And we take these coherent practices at national level to share it in regional platform and global platforms like this one. Um, and then came the hearts. Um, a good example of these coherence practices is the Latin American cases with the public investment systems. Uh, but what are public investment systems? Where well, public investment systems are governmental units in, in Latin America that you can find in as, at least 19 different countries in Latin America. So they almost all have public investment systems. And these public investment systems, um, as you may see here, are made to uh, select the best projects through mandatory methodologies to provide public infrastructure and social services uh, to control the budget and make the public expenditure more efficiently. And then why coherence in public investments? Or better even, what is the cause of incoherence in public investments? 
Well, the cost is not just the replacement of the infrastructure or the replacement of the building or the reconstruction of the building. There's also an, inter an interruption of the uh, social development in the place that a disaster occurs. And also in Latin America, suddenly, uh, there's no even a build back better. I even say that it's a build back worse. And uh, what does this mean for public investment then? Well, in, it means that we need a new approach for public investment and to do public infrastructure in Latin America. And um, this new approach uh, should insert and consider disaster risk reduction in public investment methodologies. And um, uh, well, this new approach, uh, why, why in public investments, um, why we sometimes do build back wars in Latin America? Well, that is because we consider the risk has something uh, natural, has something that is external to our projects, to our infrastructure projects. And the new approach that we are developing is that uh, risk is part of the public investment development process. Sorry. And, and to include the, risk, the disaster risk reduction in the public investments allowed us to really select the best projects, changing those mandatory methodologies. That's allowed us uh, to consider risk in public infrastructure and safeguard uh, the public infrastructure and social service provision. And also, in, in budgetary terms, to save uh, money, public money, in reconstruction. Uh, a good example of this is the case a good example of this is the case of Mexico. We have developing, we have been developing with the uh, finance uh, ministry in Mexico uh, different ways to include in the methodologies of public investments um, disaster risk reduction. But this um, this implies to develop first to open these methodologies to include these terms, new terms about uh, risk reduction, and also to develop different tools. Like in the case of Mexico, the uh, risk map that is uh, very uh, a high a high level tool that allows to to tell different different risk. For um, uh, for a determinate um, geographical space, and I can take those data in public investments methodologies to include it in the cost-benefit analysis that we used to do for public infrastructure. And then, and finally, what what is the impact of all this? Well, the impact is. Uh, a safer and a more resilient public infrastructure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Sorry. Where is Latin America? Okay. Any questions? Yeah, hi, thank you for the presentation. I would like to ask you, uh, what would you say is the 
critical challenge in terms of doing the tra this transition between the, the concept and the theory around the notion of social construction of this disaster into sectoral methodologies within the institutions and sectors and normative uh, and, and judiciary uh, instruments. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there, there are huge challenges in, in every way. I mean, first, um, not just the coherence between agendas, but uh, coherence is uh, uh, a topic that uh, you can scale in different ways. For example, in Latin America, for public investment, the coherence between the institutions is very important. Sometimes a lot of different institutions are taking the same data on disaster risk management and they are not even sharing each other the information. So that uh, doesn't allow that this information came to the public investment system that doesn't, doesn't get that data. Other, other challenge is to open the mind of the, um, and the methodologies to include risk disaster reduction. That's, um, that's a huge fight because it's a, it's a change of view, it's a change of vision. You are passing from an economic way to see the, the things just in cost benefit and just in an external uh, conception of the risk. The risk is not mine, it's something that is there outside but I will never touch it and if it, something happens, it's not my fault to um, a vision that you accept that uh, you can do something about risk and you can plan a resilient infrastructure in order to uh, decrease that, that risk. Any other questions? No? Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Thank you so much, Matthias.